<laughs> we want to welcome everyone to the well. And we will continue uh, with our, our normal programming later this morning. Uh, this is Amy Frazier has, um, is going to continue the conversation about seeking a flourishing life. But as we've been sharing, uh, Mrs. Gail Miller retired from here a couple of years ago. In the last couple of years um, passed away yesterday. And so uh, President Sam Smith is going to come and, um, and invite us to some reflection about Gail. This is one of those moments you don't look forward to. Uh, but my question to you is, uh, where were you? It's one of those moments. Where were you on January 26th, 2020? Let me see your hand if you remember that day. That day, an NBA legend, Kobe Bryant, passed away. You remember now? You remember where you were when you got the news? Where were you on September the 8th of this year? Do you remember that? You know what happened? Queen Elizabeth passed away. Gail Miller was a legend of York University. She was one of the queens mm. of York University. She poured her heart and her soul into this place for over 35 years. Even after she retired, she was a servant to this place. And to me, as president, bringing a smile or any time I would call the provost's office while she was working there, hey Sam! She had a lot of energy for life. Today hurts. Yesterday hurts. And we're mourning with her family. It hurts for us, but we have hope. We talk about that all the time. So as much as it hurts for us, we know without a doubt that Gail right now is standing in the presence of the Almighty God. And we can celebrate that. Today you see purple all around here. What a great image of support. It was her favorite color. And so we're honoring her and we're honoring her family today uh, by wearing purple. In just a moment, I'm going to ask Dr. Lonis, who's known Gail a lot longer than I and her family, to say a prayer. And then we'll begin the world. Would you please stand after the prayer and just read something for our time as well in the church? Would you bow with me? Father God, we approach your throne this morning with, with heavy hearts as we've lost a beloved family member, Gail Miller. Father God, I ask that you wrap your loving arms around Dr. Ray, around Les and Ham. Lynn, Jay, the grandchildren, other family members, that you provide them the comfort and peace that can only come from you. Father God, as Gail was a friend, mentor, teacher, confidant to many people still on this campus and many more around the world, I ask that you be with each of us as we process through our grief and that you comfort us as well. That you be with those of us that are going to be able to support the Miller family, that we can offer love and encouragement, a hug, a hand to hold, a moment of silence, whatever it may be, that you will allow us to come to together as a community to lift them up during this uh, difficult time. Father God, is. Those of us that knew Gail, we know that she loved you in Jesus. It was a great example of what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And we know that she's with you. And for that, we're thankful. And I ask that you're with us and that you help us carry out her legacy and her memory and honor her by living for you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Good morning. 
Uh, my topic was that there is a necessity for lifelong transformation through God so that we can flourish. And I've been thinking about that for a long time because I could go any direction with that. And usually I stand up front and take my shoes off and make you guys participate in some weird activity. Um, I couldn't think of anything that fit, so I moved on. But I did come up with about 10 different topics, and instead of settling on one, I decided to do all of them. So, bear with me, this will go quickly. I was going to tell about my cousin who attempted suicide and didn't think that she mattered. She f failed, thank goodness, and went on to be a wife, a mother of six children, and she started a nonprofit organization called Reaching New Ministries for those struggling with suicidal thoughts. I actually brought her book. So if you want to read it, please feel free to borrow it from me, or I can get you your own. She still struggles, just like all people do, but it has to do with perspective, and she changed her perspective. She chose to have God's truth be the perspective she lives her life with. She has used her struggles to help others, and she's allowed God to be the most important part of her life, and she has flourished. I thought about going through scripture and finding stories of people who flourished in their lives. There's a lot, by the way, which is why I couldn't arrow it down very well. Uh, ironically, as I looked into finding a common thread, an intriguing story to share and attempt to keep your attention, this came to mind. Most people, including us, struggle. We all struggle. This, the Bible's full of stories um, of people struggling, but or I thought, um, we doubt God at times, and so did Thomas. We chose, or we choose to deny God. So did Peter. We think we can do things in our own way, and so did Jacob. Human accounts in the Bible are not very different than those of us today, because they, like us, are human. King David was a man after God's own heart. He struggled and made some pretty poor choices, but God still used him, and he chose to follow God. He allowed God to use him, and he allowed God to be the driving force in his life. He made mistakes, but he learned from them, and his life was good. Through God, he flourished. When God is present, good things happen. And I knew I was going to cry, I was going to bring Kleenex, but I didn't, and that's okay. And yesterday, <laughs> sorry, but you knew this was going to happen. Gail Miller passed away. Oh, and I want to take a picture because you guys look really cool in your pro. <laughs> Not that you had a choice, I was going to take the picture anyway, so. Uh, but she passed away, I still can't really believe it, and I don't think I will, actually, for a long time. That's kind of the way my brain handles things like this. But I thought about talking about her life and how she flourished. I was positive I wouldn't be able to make it through that whole thing. But she's a shining example of flourishing because of her relationship with Jesus. She was a phenomenal educator. I love teaching alongside her. Yesterday I thought about her microbiology syllabus. She would make these tiny little syllabus and you had to read that. So that was her, her syllabus for that class and her course guide, we call it now. She was a wife and a mother and a friend and a discerning voice for those who listen. She would definitely give you, you um, her opinion. And there, was a gap. there will be a gap in our lives because of her absence. But man, she flourished. And her legacy and example will live on in so many ways in all of us, in this room and around the world, to be honest. What a gift that is for all of us. I realized I couldn't do most of these topics without crying. As you can see, I'm still trying not to. I wear my heart on my sleeve and I won't apologize for that. Being a musician and a music educator, I use music to make sense of the world to process hard things, and to reinforce the things that I need in my life. And you know what? I want to flourish. I think I am. I want you to flourish, and I know that you can. I believe we all can. Live a full, purposeful, godly life, and not just strive or survive day to day. Sure, we can do it on our own, but what's even better is we can allow God to use us and build us up, and continue to allow Him to transform us into the people He designed us to be. I realized after all my thoughts that we don't need to, you don't need to hear me talk. That's actually not really my gift to typically cry when I'm up in front of people, which is kind of weird actually, but um, also I do talk a lot, so I've demonstrated that already. Uh, we don't, you don't need to hear me preach after I thought about that. I was like, I've never actually done that, but I suppose in some ways I, I do. 
And you didn't need to hear me give you a lot of ideas and thoughts to ponder, although I suppose I did that anyway. Today, I decided the way to deal with all of this and to show how we can flourish as a university and as people who God loves, we're gonna make some music. I'm gonna bring some people forward. Music helps us understand things in a way that nothing else can. Hopefully through what follows, you will experience the grace and presence and love of Christ. Through him and a relationship with him, we can flourish in ways we can't even imagine.
want to say thank you, first of all, to the students who um, willingly met with me yesterday to learn those. Because, <laughs> uh, of course, I kept changing my mind. Uh, but I just want to say again, we, can, we will flourish with God. And when God is present, good things happen.